Hi, um, my name is Catherine, and this is my video blog on what I'm my what I'm doing to be proactive during the pandemic and how I'm handling and processing everything and doing my part to um, hopefully help with social distancing. So I remember things started um, when I was at work. I work for a school, and we got a lot of kind of systemic up notification like bureaucratic notifications about the circumstances of things when it spread um, we had our own kind of color-coded uh, plan for students and then it felt like everything hit pretty fast we, when we got the news that we had to come in for a, um, an in-service day and that we were canceling school for this for the kids and we came in um, and it was really it was pretty nerve-wracking. We, I'm a support staff member, so I'm an hourly employee, but I work in special ed. So I do work with teachers and I do still help students remotely, but um, as an hourly employee, my, my whether I was going to be paid or not, um, was up in the air until the governor and then Trump passed um, state and federal legislation funding. So my job has been converted to remote instruction. Um, and I am guaranteed my pay through the year, which is a blessing, and I'm very grateful for it. But at the same time now, I'm hearing news about what the future is going to look like and a lot of federal budget cuts to education and the prospect for layoffs. Um, and that's a very real life uh, barrier. So it, it's been a, a, good, a piece of how I've been hunkering down has been working from home and supporting students remotely um, through online instruction. Um, and this has been a big shift and I work with students who definitely uh, need have issues with motivation. Um, I work in emotional support, life skill setting, so our students are really at risk for um, educational failure and really benefit from direct instruction. So having this, so trying to support them remotely is definitely challenging and the progress is slower. Um, I really miss them and I've tried um, to work with teachers, our social worker, um, and keep an open line of communication with people in our, in our district to, work as, to really work as a team right now, more so distantly than sometimes we do in the building. So that is one piece of my day. Um, I definitely miss being in the building and I really miss our, my stu the students I work with. Um, a lot of them have made really big strides. They also have, a, have had a lot of adverse childhood experiences. Um, they don't have really a supportive environment and their world is changing in ways that some, that I imagine is very challenging for them to process. Um, so I, th I do think about them, and that is a piece of how I've been hunkering down. A second part of um, this moment is that I had to move. I signed a lease for an apartment. I moved from, I should back up and say that I moved from Delaware County back to Philadelphia. Um, so that's been a big piece of that is that I am a person who wants to distance myself and quarantine and follow our protocol. But um, having to relocate has forced me to kind of um, make more contact with people. And there have been a lot of challenges with that. Um, so some of those challenges include um, so moving. Um, I hired movers and it was challenge more so challenging than I it was the first time I ever hired movers, um, and it was a little more difficult than I imagined it would be with prior to the pandemic. Not everybody was open to understandably um, providing that service right now. Fortunately, it, it, it helped, it worked out, and they were wonderful. Um, but just maintaining contact and always being aware of distance with moving is is um, heightened and challenging. <laughs> um, furniture, I needed to 
I lived with a roommate and I needed to get furniture. We both needed furniture. That was very challenging. Um, I ended up spending more money than I had anticipated and budgeted for before the pandemic. Um, I should note I signed a lease for an apartment about a weekend before uh, the news broke out that we were closing our schools and going into flexible instruction. So this has been a lot. Um, and basically um, I'm, I'm limited. I tried to use the marketplace on Facebook for the first time to get some furniture. Um, it didn't work out because a sofa, for example, I bought um, was in Delaware and I couldn't go to Delaware. So I'm still working out a refund for that. And I had to order furniture. I ordered it from Ikea and it won't be delivered until the end of June. So I have, I'm fortunate to have some furniture. Oops, <laughs> sorry. That was my bed. Um, so I have that. I have my nightstand and I do have some other furniture. <laughs> um, but a lot of, a lot of the pieces of my apartment won't be complete until the end of June. Um, but we can make that work. <laughs> um, so just contactless services, for example, we just got internet today, um, but that was another challenge. Um, originally, I wanted to go with Verizon. It was cheaper um, and it was just recommended, but they, wouldn't, they weren't able to perform a contactless delivery. So I had to switch to Comcast at the last minute and that was then delayed. And then there were complications with um, activating internet for a while because in part due to contactless uh, serve provide due to a contactless service provider um, I almost had to go out to back to Delaware County they told me to that they made a mistake in delivering equipment initially instructed me to go to Havertown to drop off the equipment and then pick up new equipment um, because that was the only like a site where they could have kind of remote delivery or service. Um, so fortunately it worked out though. <laughs> I didn't have to do that and I'm appreciative of that. Um, so another piece of that is, so certainly like a theme is throughout this moment is balancing connection with no contact. <laughs> and that's been challenging throughout like functional moments, like, like a move. <laughs> And work which I'm I know other people can certainly sympathize with um, some other things that um, have been kind of an obstacle are for during a move right now or getting groceries um, waiting in lines which I know everybody is dealing with right now and just taking extra protocol um, being more distant from my family has definitely kind of heightened my anxiety a little bit. Um, like my grandmother is in an assisted living facility. Um, she can't have any contact right now or, or visitors. So I've been writing her a lot of cards and I've been trying to call her, but she's definitely been more depressed lately because she's been isolated. Her friends um, don't really, everybody, her friends don't really wanna socialize. Everybody's kind of confined. And that's been heightening my own anxiety. I love my grandmother. Um, I lived with her for a while, so I keep her in my thoughts a lot. And I'm trying to reach out with her and connect with her. I'm working with my parents to find little ways to just celebrate her and um, reach out and kind of just be present in ways that I know that she's not used to. Um, she's another person with who lives with anxiety. So I know that this moment is tough for her. Um, and it's also tough for me being further now away from her. Um, I clean a lot more now. Um, I clean my groceries, basically anything that would have been in contact. I take medication. So if I go to a pharmacy, there's extra protocol. Um, masks, masks are another thing. This is my mask that I made. Um, it's just like a kind of simple DIY mask. And then this is a mask that I just bought from Amazon. So it's a little sturdier. Um, I can hand wash this and I'm not gonna drop my phone this time. But I actually made a little um, 
mess cook. So that's kind of part of my life now. <laughs> um, hand sanitizer is also really big. So this is a little spray hand sanitizer that I had from work. Um, and then I was, I found this at Target for the first time in months and it was still like under $2, but it's limited one per person. Um, I'm trying to take just good care of myself. Um, I used to see a therapist, but because of finances and moving and also just uh, quarantine protocol, I terminated therapy. So I have some workbooks that I use. I've used them before and while I was in therapy, but now I am relying on them a little more. Um, I like to draw, so I have some drawings. This is a start of a drawing, don't judge, <laughs> but um, this is the first, uh, the beginning of the first row home I lived in when I went to Temple. I kind of like to draw houses a lot, or just sort of geometric things. Um, I listen to music. I've been trying to make pandem- I've been making pandemic playlists to kind of reflect the different like moods and stuff I've been in. Um, and I really like- and I've been listening to podcasts. Um, normally I- if I do listen to a podcast, I listen to, I guess, more kind of the- I guess factual or more news related or information related cultural podcasts like on NPR or um, other sources. But recently I've been like, I've been gravitating towards like more satirical um, cultural commentary podcasts because humor just is really helpful right now. I really love a podcast called The Read. Um, it's hilarious, it's really on point, um, and the humor in it has really helped me kind of like process a lot of serious issues um and i've just been finding that a lot of this is balancing connection with real life barriers like it's important to have things like drawing or projects or like a podcast um to take care of yourself but also like employment is a real life barrier moving is a barrier my savings is a barrier. Um, there are a lot of challenges and I'm trying to have these routines and have these outlets to kind of cope with, process, and just be mindful of the work that's going to be involved in like getting, finding a new job, hoping that I can find a new job, um, navigating school, um, being a student and supporting students and everything and other things. So I hope the best for everyone else. Um, I hope that everybody is taking good care of themselves and that you're able to stay distant when possible. I know that that's a privilege that's afforded to a lot of people um, and that there are, there's a lot of inequity and a lot of really unjust practices right now, in my opinion. Um, and I hope that everybody is healthy and has access to supports and services and has connection. So yeah, that's my project. Take care.